Um, so for those few of you who, are, who have just gotten out of a monastery and haven't heard of what the RISC-V processor is, this is a very superficial introduction. I'm going to have links for you so that you can go into a deeper dive. Uh, the vast majority of these slides are at uh, RISC-V.org. You can go see the presentations from the original uh, presenters. You can get the slides. We can look at some projects there. Uh, the site has just been recently updated as of the last workshop. There's been three previous workshops. The workshops are, are s snapshots in time where you can go and look at the, the state of the art of the RISC-V research. The last RISC-V workshop was last month. So this snapshot uh, is pretty current, the one I'll give you today, but uh, this project moves so fast and in so many different directions that I'm sure there's been some development in, uh, in a couple of different directions that I won't get to. If you guys know of any RISC-V projects that I don't know about, please tell me. Um, I was just at a conference uh, a couple weeks ago, the Boston area architecture conference, the BARC conference, and there were two RISC-V presentations there that I had n no idea were going to be presented, local teams. It was great. Um, so I will talk about the who, what, where, why, and when, and the how. Um, I'll try to focus, even though there's, a, there's dozens of RISC-V projects, I'll try to focus on the HPC ones to, to stay, uh, stay somewhat in the, uh, the theme of the conference. Um, I don't know a lot about some of the other consortium, I, but I can tell you about the Open Compute Initiative. There, if you go to opencompute.org, there's, there's eight subgroups on the, their homepage. There used to be nine. They had an HPC initiative. Um, it's no longer there. The two, the two heads of that group, uh, Dev Paul from IDT and Tom Summers from Rex Computing, are big RISC-V fans. So, so some of the work uh, they were doing, those guys, you know, the IDT and the Rapid IO folks, go to the RISC-V workshops. So some of the work that was going on there was, was either in parallel or, uh, or somewhat symmetric with the, uh, with the open compute um, interests. Um, and so we're all kind of on the RISC-V bandwagon now. Um, I have probably a dozen of the Patterson green cards left over, so if you really want one and you want to look at the 177 instructions on RISC-V, I'll, I'll give it to you. If, I, I had a big run on them at the BARC conference. Um, if you want one and I don't have it with me here today, then uh, send me an email and I'll get you one. And uh, yeah, or, or we can get one from Berkeley. They have these down at Berkeley too. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the uh, IEEE standards, in particular 754-2008, which is a bane for programmers of certain devices, not all devices, but, but certainly exotic, uh, exotic CPUs. So here's, here's the who. So Patterson and Hennessy wrote a seminal computer architecture book in 1990, and I don't know what Hennessy did with the rest of his life, but Patterson has been in the risk wheelhouse for, um, you know, f for the last couple of uh, decades. So he's uh, certainly responsible for five risk processors, hence the name of risk five. Uh, DLX was uh, uh, introduced in, in that book. Um, DLX is the foundation for the open risk project. Uh, this guy over here, uh, Christy, or excuse me, Kirsty Asinovic, um, he's, he's effectively the PM, PI of the, of the RISC-V project. He's also at the Aspire Lab, teaches and researches at, at Berkeley. So there's a tremendous amount of, of RISC-V work coming out of the Aspire Lab. I'll get into some of their uh, implementations. Uh, Kirsty also has an MIT background. A lot of the professors at uh, Aspire Lab, uh, Stoyanovic, uh, John Bachrock, who's the, the main uh, impetus behind the Chisel uh, HDL, uh, they, they have an MIT past. So that's why, uh, why there's a lot of co-development going on, and that's why the next workshop's at MIT. So I got this slide from Aaron Thomas's presentation, also available at, uh, at the RISC-V. Uh, this is mostly uh, pulled from, uh, he looked at, at all GitHub polls, 
So, uh, so there's, there's some, some names lacking there, but it's very hard to get our arms around who are the industry participants in the Risk Five project. Uh, they, they tend to, because of the licensing of, uh, of Risk Five, they, they generally don't do a presentation at the Risk Five workshops. But you can, you know, some of them do. Google certainly does. They, uh, they do, uh, they do GitHub polls and, and occasionally respond to uh, some of the Risk Five lists. <clears throat> so, like I said, I can't really tell you what risk five processes are out there in the field. Um, uh, there's certainly some commercial vendors that are shipping risk five projects right now, at least if you believe the EE Times, um, you know, responses to some of the EE Times articles about risk five. Um, but I don't know what they are. I do know that I went to a a top of rack conference, and I saw Chen Sun do a presentation on his silicon photonics risk five impl uh, implementation. Uh, I thought that was that was fascinating because I wasn't there here again to find a, a risk five lecture, but but he's uh, he's doing his work on risk five and and Bunny Huang, who is um, on the board of directors at the Low Risk Project, the University of Cambridge Risk Five Initiative, has a as a an open source uh, laptop project called the Novena, and he's very, very uh, pro low risk risk five. Uh, it'll probably make its way into the Novena project at some point. So um, there's there's a couple of definitions of what passes for open hardware. The Open Source Hardware uh, Alliance has a pretty good one. I'm not really sure that's the one that the the Berkeley folks. Uh, they're, they're not using the OSHA uh, logo, so they have another open source hardware uh, group that, that they associate with. But um, the, there's there's a lot of uh, you know combined overlap agreement there. So I've always maintained that risk is for everyone because um, you take something like this. So I've got eight risk CPUs in here. Um, I got to figure Samsung's marginal cost on on the ARM risk processors like a nickel. So so the CPU is not very sexy on this. It's between me and getting what I want to do get done on this. And what I want to get done on this is certainly in the next generation phone, when this thing has a 4K uh, display, I want to stick it in a piece of cardboard and you know sit at President Underwood's desk for the next season of House of Cards on Netflix. And so, so the CPUs don't help me there. There's an accelerator does, in that case, the GPU. So, so the next generations of, of things like this, the CPU is going to, to sort of vanish into, um, you know, into a background position. So we, we don't want to spend too much money on it. We don't want it to get in our way of getting what we want done in the accelerator business. And more importantly, there's ways to make these things now that you can get the accelerator or, or whatever feature and functionality you want done uh, and, then, and then just have the CPUs be the supporting uh, glue there. So the, if you, if you want to get up to speed real fast, go check out the two Git, GitHub sites. There's RISC-5 and RISC-5-MIT. There's uh, a lot of archives. The, there's been probably two years of workshops and mailing lists, so, so you can go back and look at the archives for the software list and the hardware list. And, um, the, the Shakti project has its own GitHub, so Madhu at, at Macaw Labs maintains a, a GitHub link on, on his site. Uh, the, the Shakti, I have a slide on the Shakti initiative. It's, it's breathtaking, the scope of work going on in, in India. And finally on this slide, uh, the Open Sock group, uh, the Lawrence Berkeley folks, uh, use uh, Risk Five as a, a an instantiation of, of what they want to do. They have a much broader charter, the Open Knock and the Open Sock business, uh, but they really like uh, what Risk Five is doing, and they speak at the Risk Five conferences. Um, at MIT, we have the HPEC, the high performance. It used to be high performance embedded computing. Now it's high performance extreme computing, uh, because we had this big fight on what what defines embedded. You know, if there's a PCI bus in there, is it embedded? Or, or extreme, so we're the HPEC conference now, and 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 we're so. And then we have another BDEC, another big data uh, extreme computing conference at MIT, and I thought it was on the Exascale site, but I can't find it. So I'll, I'll dig that uh, that that URL out. <laughs> 
So I go into a little bit more detail at the, at the end here. There's, there's a path to exascale which goes through risk five, and, and we, we can talk quite a bit about how um, you know, the RISC V initiative facilitates uh, some of Kogi's lists of technology dis disablers. So Peter Kogi from N Notre Dame was the lead author on the DOE Exaskill uh, report. And we, we uh, tend to respond to some of those, uh, some of his concerns pretty well with, with a, a RISC V approach. So, <clears throat> so I don't think RISC V is going to uh, or risk in general uh, gets in the way of anybody uh, that that is uh, that's in the CISC business. The if, if you've got a code base that that's on x86 right now, x86 I think is uh, 3,000 instructions. This is uh, this is 177. Uh, ARM v8 is 1,000. Uh, I I don't think that that this is a, a competitor for for either. Uh, uh, and either of the constituents, either the big x86 folks or the, or the big risk folks, uh, it's it's quite clear how to uh, to see what the value of risk five is in academia. You can train up undergrads really quick on on risk five, and then they can go off in their in their different directions. Um, yeah, this. This uh, URL up here, the Goblin Core 64, that's, that's a wonderful site. The uh, Goblin Core, the Texas Tech Goblin Core was demonstrated in the uh, Emerging Technologies track of supercomputing uh, last November. Um, it, they, they have a very broad and deep initiative, lots of students involved. It's a, it's a really good site if you want to check out GC64. So these slides are kind of busy. I'll tear through them. There's, uh, I wanted to, the, the reason they're busy is I wanted to keep the text uh, so that we didn't leave any, any strands. I wanted to be literal, but I'll just point out small things on each slide. There's five membership levels. Now, if, if you're uh, an academic institution, you can certainly get in at, get in at an auditor level of uh, 2,500 bucks a year. That's a, a lot of schools can afford that. So that's why I think that's why you see so many small schools involved with, with Risk Five. Individuals uh, can get a non-voting uh, membership, and then um, uh, I think you can still get in as a founding member. Um, we had uh, the list of founding members is on subsequent slides. Um, you can certainly get in at these levels. They may just not call you a founding member. And like I say, this one's really busy, but I want to just point out a couple. So, so Google, uh, it, it's not clear what their interest is in, in, in a Risk Five processor. They certainly have lots of directions they can go with processors, but they've been very, very proactive. They had Ron Minnick talk about the core boot processor at, at the last Risk Five workshop. They're they're very. Very, uh, very busy. All, by the way, all of these, all of these guys, ex except for Expressive, are platinum. These, this is this is the only gold um, founding sponsor, and everybody else is silver. After that, we just got the one gold founding um, member. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Adaptiva. So this is interesting. This guy has uh, uh, this guy. This this company has a uh, Parallela board, which is a Zinc 7000 class FPGA. And then on the side, he's got his own chip, the Epiphany 3. He might be up to the Epiphany 4. And that's a very low power um, uh, processor, which which is quite handy at FFT. So it's interesting to see what 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 he might be doing with RISC V. He, the Adaptive a blog writes, uh, he wrote a very long piece last month on why the RISC V would be perfect for his for his product line. Um, and again, University of Cambridge, very mature initiative. They they were at the first Risk Five workshop. Uh, some of these other companies, I don't have. I don't see anybody here who, who's talked recently. J Jan Gray did, um, but it's not clear yet what some of these other um, you know HP labs, what some of their interests are. So, like I say, if you want to get started, go to Quan's uh, Linux how-to right here. Um, and it'll tell you how to set up either a, a cross-compile environment on your distro of choice, on your architecture of choice. I've got an Ubuntu box that I think is an early x86. It's 32-bit. Um, and that's working for me just fine. I can run uh, RISC-V in Simula, and I can uh, you know, compile things. Um, 
Not a whole lot of complete distros yet. The various BSDs are running on RISC-V, but uh, the, none of the, of the big Linux distros are, are fully complete yet. There's, there's some really ambitious initiatives going on right now, but, but you can't, can't quite get it. Um, if you don't want to build your own machine, you can, you can go into the website and get the JavaScript um, uh, simulator. And then here again, if you want to get in on the ground floor, this is the only spec that's really been knocked down. If you want to get in on the, uh, on the compressed ISA spec or the uh, privileged ISA spec, these are still in, in, uh, uh, in development. And uh, there's a brisk dialogue going on on the list. Um, th there's some lists that you probably only get in uh, two or three emails a month, but, but if you're on software development, you'll, you'll get, a, you know, you'll get a, bunch, a bunch a day. So this is one of the justifications. This slide, this is the Lawrence Berkeley guys, the open SOC. They use this one a lot because locality is so important uh, in energy efficient chips. Um, if you're moving data, uh, then you take a, a factor of 10 penalty. If you can, if you can keep it where where it is, you know, so, so the, the risk five promise is smaller uh, binaries. So, you know, less registers to fill, less movement. But for me, this is the compelling story. This is a, a Shekhar Borkar from Intel, uh, presents this slides at a lot of his lectures. So a couple of decades ago, we were getting our parallelism, you know, Moore's Law over a decade from both uh, classic Moore's Law, classic Moore's Law being, you know, uh, transistor density per area, uh, and equal parts instruction level parallelism from, from one of the uh, groups like, um, you know, SIMD extension folks that, that are giving us 128-bit SIMD extensions, or when you start getting up here, uh, CUDA. So, so you're getting all of your, you're staying right on this 45 degree angle on Moore's Law, but you're getting much more of that out of increased parallelism. So Borkar says to get to exascale, we'll need 670x uh, increases in parallelism uh, uh, from, from that wing because we're not going to get it out of transistor density anymore. We're coming to the end, or maybe we're already at the end of Moore's Law and Dennard scaling. So, so this, this is going to be interesting. What what that solution looks like. We, we think if we do the, the 128 bit risk 5 version that we'll be able to revisit some of these, some of the initial um, uh, uh, density. So I'm going to tear through a couple of these examples. This is an, an, an Australian uh, team that's presented a couple of times at, at, um, at the risk 5 workshop. They, they have, um, they're very interested in energy efficiency research and therefore have this clockless design. Um, I have a, I've got a full presentation of so theirs, so I'll, I'll show it to you if you want, because I'm going to tear through my clock here. Luca Benini's lab, uh, they're very interested in broader topics that they can use RISC-V to investigate. Uh, they, they certainly are looking at, uh, you know, here again, uh, a an ultra low power, a parallel ultra low power chip design and, and how to implement that. Um, this is a, the Cornell project that um, was listed uh, in, uh, in Aaron Thomas's slide. Um, I have his presentation as well. I'm sorry, I'll tear through to my last couple of slides here. A very small project, uh, an, an IoT uh, style project, 130 nan nanometer CMOS. You can you can almost do that at home now. 130 nanometer is uh, is a uh, you know uh, you can probably buy a, a massless fab machine that'll generate 130 nanometer uh, wafers for you. Uh, so so that's not it's not exactly makerspace territory, but but uh, it's getting there. This is the uh, the uh, gray. Uh, Gray Research Project. He speaks at. Um, I think he's spoken at every at every conference. Uh, this is one of the big groups. So, they, so India has just recently given another forty-five million dollars to develop a sixty-four. Like I say, another sixty-four bit. Um, uh, Risk five processor. So India is very, very much interested in having their own processor, and, and the Shakti initiative is is what 
what's represented there. And each one of these classes is called out on the, the, green, the green card here. Your, your compressed class, you can, uh, if you only want to use 16-bit, uh, you, can, you can do that with, with, I believe it's the compressed class, maybe it's, the, uh, maybe it's one of these other classes. Um, another place that has at least four Risk Five research projects going on is is uh, is the Aspire Lab, the place that that uh, started it. They they tend to name their projects after um, trains or or classes of trains. There's a, a Z scale. You're probably all familiar with HO scale, and Z scale is smaller than HO scale, all the way up to I think there's something called the Steam scale, but but uh, but there's there's quite a few different scales of trains, um, so we have to get on on our horse here and uh, and put together some some good uh, risk five research projects in Boston. So I have some here. So Draper Labs uh, is looking at a uh, at a secure processor variant. They uh, have probably demoed that uh, this month. They said they would have a demo. They presented it at, at last uh, uh, last month's workshop, and they said they'd be ready to, to demo it this this month. So maybe they did. Um, this guy on 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 uh, the right there, Chen Sun. So he he's another one of these guys that has an address at both Berkeley and at MIT, uh, looking at sil silicon photonics. Has uh, just finished up his PhD. He's he's written quite a bit about um, how it would work with the with the Risk Five and and other processors. Um, and then the there's at least one other guy working on Risk Five here. I think this this guy on the left is um, University of Colorado, maybe. Uh, Wade. Uh, this is one of the MIT programs. Uh, there's there's three or four students working on Risk Five implementations uh, in the CSG lab at uh, at, at MIT CSIL uh, Computer Science AI Lab, and uh, there's probably maybe a total of eight going on at MIT with various levels of, of uh, self awareness or or um, awareness of, of other projects. I keep it's very embarrassing. I keep meeting MIT people at, at conferences like this and. I find out that they're working down the street on something that we're working on too, so it's kind of awkward. We need to have more conferences on the on the East Coast. I keep telling the HPC Advisory Council that we have to have have some more more conferences. Um, yeah, so this is this is another one of the the risk the CSG risk um, slides. Low risk, probably after after the Shakti uh, group. Uh, the busiest um, and uh, most productive. They've been with the with the project since its inception, and you can go to their website and they talk about about their their interests. Uh, also, uh, stemming from energy efficiency and low power first. Um, so Peter Kogi. Uh, still has his list of technology disablers, which I think we, I think we respond to, uh, pretty well with with the with the with the shish kebab uh, uh, model that we're working on. If you can't have a good name for a processor, then you, you might might as well not even bother. So we're gonna we're gonna skewer the sysk business with the shish kebab um, uh, that may not survive past the the first design review. But uh, but Kogi lays out a bunch of things that you have to solve if you want to get to exascale and and. The group, uh, the the team talked about it last night, the uh, roundtable. So, so we've kind of defined an approach to it, and uh, it's it's very much of an abstraction. It's a general approach, but we think we're going to be able to synthesize a lot of this Risk Five, this 128-bit processor, into uh, into our FPGAs and demo some of some of these. This isn't very well fleshed out yet, but it will be by by the time we have our conference in in July. And that's about all my time. I. I strongly encourage you to come by um, by Boston in July, uh, if if for only one reason that I can guarantee it won't be snowing. Um, that's uh, <laughs> I don't think we've ever had snow in July. Uh, it's it's been a much better February so far for us Bostonians than last February. Um, I was telling one of the attendees earlier we we ran out of salt last February and that <laughs> road salt and that's bad. That's when you run out of road salt, you know you've had a bad winter. So, but I can I can take some questions now. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, what the question is, um, where where is, does silicon photonics fit into the RISC V initiative? So, Chen Sun did a presentation in the January uh, or uh, last month's uh, workshop, and it's it not only is his slides available on the risk 5org site, but but the presentation uh, is as well, the, the video. So he's a silicon photonics guy that doesn't have a real dog in the risk 5 business, but it just facilitates his, his silicon photonics work. Yep. Uh, yeah, the 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 uh, the basic only instantiations can fit into um, into a real small form factor. Uh, Patterson did a run of a hundred two by two millimeter chips for thirty thousand dollars. So in the old days, you couldn't do a chip run for thirty thousand dollars. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so you can you, if you want room to burn. You can use a Z board, which is the th not quite the smallest FPGA. If you don't want room to do your own, um, you know, reconfigurable logic extensions, you can use a Zybo. So yeah, Risk V can get pretty small. A lot of the, the big initiatives use, you know, Altics and, and you know much much better, uh, bigger FPGAs. But you can certainly um, the the Rocket Core instructions on the Risk V site just tell you how to flash it right into your your garden variety. Um, Xilinx uh, Z board. So, what, what's road mapping be to uh, too specific? But what's kind of the vision and or roadmap for risk five specifically in HPC slash big data type markets? Or is this, will we just classify this as it's still an academic exercise? Tools in academic circles for people to do experiments. So, in the, in the, the Shakti warehouse class model that they've got going on, they've got um, IEEE 754, they've got um, uh, a, a, a rapid IO um, uh, NIC, if that's the right term, or AXI bus uh, rapid IO interface sitting on top of it. So, so they're already looking at. Um, at, at being able to to support anything that that you know some of these data center folks are saying they need in a die the the broader academic community so so if, if you if you say my my data center needs needs uh, you know uh, twenty nanosecond latency between nodes there there's a way to build that into risk five if you want to be HTP high throughput computing there's a way you know you can you can put uh, additional memory controllers on it's a it's it's a it's an IP building block process at least chisel is so, so, so let, let me ask kind of a related question because I'm just trying to get my arms around how real is risk five in the world of academia so do you have any foundries or IP vendors that have or are thinking about having risk five as a standard IP block in their library? Not in the founding membership list. So you mean something like um um I'm, well, like Adaptiva, certainly Adaptiva. They're not they're not AMD, but uh, but they could run over to TSMC and print. Uh, right, but, uh, but TSMC or Global Foundries has a library that I can just go to if I'm a fabulous chip vendor, you know, just a standard library. I need a processor core. Here's Chris Five. Yeah. TRTL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can pull that off the shelf. Is, is there anyone doing that yet? I mean, that, that to me just seems to be an, an indicator that there's actually traction in the market. Yeah. So so there's certainly one of the Berkeley processors is a 45 nanometer process which I think is TSMC. You go you go because we're in academia, you download the blue spec model for it or the or the chisel model and hit generate Verilog. So right, but you get that from Berkeley, you don't get that from global founders or uh, TSMC yeah, I don't. I don't have the specific answer to that. Uh, they they may have they may have a model for that. The industry folks, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. All right, thank you. I'll, I'll be over. Uh, from slide, I want to take the, uh, the benefit of uh, risk. Well, I'll give it to you because, especially if it's somebody else's presentation, I'll, I'll give it to you. Thank you.